Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to attempt to plant a flag on Dreads. Now these other contracts seem to be more lucrative but we haven't actually done anything with Dreads at all and so if we take a look at our tracking station here we see that we've got a Moho lander at Moho, we've got uh, stuff on Eve and even a flag planted on Gilly Obviously, Kerbin is done. Uh, we've got a, the Elu Clipper landed on Elu. We've got the stuff around Jewel. Now, the Jewel encounter will probably come up before the Dres encounter. Let's let's just take a look. So, in theory, we could be in position to launch the Tylo mission. Maybe we should do that first, or at least get it on its way. The Dres mission, uh, we will probably complete before the uh, the Tylo lander. The Tylo lander just has to be a probe before the Tylo lander gets there. And that's uh, actually a little bit less than what I wanted. I wanted 96 degrees, that's about 90. Uh, but yeah, I think we're at the phase angle for Joule right now. The phase angle for Dres is 82 degrees, I believe. So uh, we've got a few more days until that. So, okay, uh, we'll get uh, Tylo uh, probe uh, sent over there and what does the contract actually stipulate for that all we need to do is transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of Tylo so we don't really need to bring it back we just need something that can land safely on Tylo okay so I'll build that probe and then we'll uh, build a crewed mission to Drez so that we can plant a flag there all right all right so this is why I designed for this mission uh, the lander is this and it has 3,400 delta V, so it's not going to do the entire descent on its own. This is also a descent stage, uh, also getting into orbit around Tylo's stage. So we're going to have uh, both working for us, hopefully. And it might be a little bit tricky to get into orbit around Tylo. I don't know how much it's going to cost right now. Uh, it could be very expensive, but we'll have to see. Um, anyway, uh, since we're probably not going to make a whole lot of landings around Tylo, I tried to put all the scientific ex in, uh, experiments on board. So we've got the Science Junior, two goo containers, and the normal assortment. And uh, reaction wheel, as you can see, normal probe core. And I've taken advantage of the radio clipping, uh, not radio clipping, but radial attachment of this RCS fuel tank, emptied the fuel tanks, but used those to make the side pod which is a lighter option than using the the tail connectors, right? These are 0.4 tons. This is much lighter. And so what we've got here is an LV-909 here, as well as Rockmax 48.7Ss. The mass of this, uh, this portion is 10.5 tons, or uh, close enough to that. And while the thrust we've got here combines to 170 kilonewtons, so we've got enough thrust for 17 tons. So we've got plenty of thrust. Uh, the fuel feeds both directions so that we can make sure that we have all that thrust all the time. And yeah, that's basically the size of it. So that's a fully featured lander. And then we've got a poodle stage here with extra solar panels. And of course a reaction wheel to control the whole thing. And then this is the nuclear transfer stage, as you can see. Nothing too complicated. And then finally, the launcher. So obviously the nuclear transfer stage doesn't have enough uh, thrust weight ratio to do anything to orbit. All the orbital stuff has to be done with this. And I've gone with an old-fashioned design. No recovery for this. So this is OFL, Old Fashioned Launcher, which means that we are asparagus staging. We are just trying to get into orbit with this and nothing too fancy. Okay. And uh, the contract uh, benefits, the amount of funds we get from it, really doesn't justify experimenting with a reusable launcher. Uh, of course, reusable launcher, we could get the funds back, but maybe disaster strikes and we don't. And I don't have a large enough launcher for this, more or less uh, conventional design. Oh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I do have two skippers on here, so actually, these main sails burn out first, they of course separate. By that point, uh, we will be fine. We'll have uh, probably exactly a thrust to weight ratio of one with the main sail and the two skippers. 
and so we'll continue like that before the skippers, uh, skipper boosters detach. Okay, so that's the plan there. Alright, now I believe we can go. Mm, bit wobbly on getting to the launch pad here. But it looks stable now. SAS on. Throttles up. Make sure everything is loaded properly. Okay, looks fine. So let's light the engines and go. Plenty of initial thrust. We'll lose a lot of that once the mainsails drop off, the two mainsail boosters. Might be that the thrust weight ratio one might not be the best idea once we get to the skippers, I mean, but we'll see. Maybe a little bit more thrust would have been preferable. Okay, getting ready for first booster sip here. Okay, SEP is good, but we're losing speed. Hmm. So I didn't. I really should lighten the load on the center here a bit. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll be fine. But I mean, this is the first time I'm launching this configuration, so I don't feel too bad about it. Okay, SEP. A huh, bit of a roll there on those. Okay, so this is not the best thing I've ever done, but so far working out. Hope those initial boosters didn't do too much damage at the KSC. Okay, getting to a decent apoapsis here. Okay, that's good enough. Not a bad ascent uh, on the final phase. And we certainly have enough fuel. I, I packed it with extra fuel, obviously. I figured if we had any left, we would just uh, use it as the first part of our jewel burn. So, no problems. This mission is going to require quite a lot of fuel, and extra Delta V buffer is entirely welcome. 94.5 by 99.9 .9. that is a fine orbit to start a dual transfer. We are in the dark. Let me do my traditional thing of extending solar panels while in the dark. But yeah, I don't have action groups yet unlocked so I have to do it like this. Okay, I've got a favorable transfer here. We'll get to 36,000 kilometers around Joule with just this single burn, no mid-course correction. Uh, we could do a mid-course correction later on, but uh, 2,008 meters per second to do this, so that's not too bad on a single burn. The trouble is that, of course, while I have some left over in this mainsail stage, much of the burn, most of the burn, will have to be done with the nervous stage, the LVN stage, and that is a slow stage, so it is not going to be able to complete the burn in good time, which means we'll probably deviate and not get that promised periapsis around Joule, but we'll try our best. Alright, not a bad start. Let's go with the nukes. And this is going to take a while. I'll get back to you once we're through with this. Still got a couple of minutes left here, but let's take a look at our ship. Oh, it's got a little bit of an oscillation going here. Hold on. So this is what it looks like in its current configuration. It's oscillating, though. That worries me. Don't do anything crazy. So yeah, looks pretty good for an uh, interplanetary ship, I think. 
And uh, we've got a nice little uh, sunrise here, so we get the silhouette there. That's a nice sight. So as far as deviation from our intended flight path, you can see it there. So we're not going to be quite hitting our aim, but anyway, looking good so far. I'll come back to you once it's done. Alright, really in the last phases of the burn now. Still looking quite nice there. And let's see how we're doing on our approach to Jewel. Uh-oh, we're overshooting. Uh, that can happen. Alright, well. Let's bring this back in. Should have stopped this a long time ago. Thankfully, as you can see, thanks in part to the remaining fuel in the main sail stage, we have plenty left over in this nuclear stage as well. So we're going to be having a good surplus going into the dual system, which might be essential since, once again, we don't know how much it's going to take to get into orbit around Tylo. It depends on how exactly our orbit ends up after we aero break around Joule. Or perhaps around Leith, depending on which approach seems to be most uh, convenient. Tough to know where I'm going when the program doesn't. Come on. Alright, well I'm going to be content with 129,000 kilometers, if that's really what we've got. And we'll do a mid-course adjustment, probably around here actually, not quite mid-course. But that'll help us out. Alright, so this is looking okay. Let's point prograde and watch it depart Kerbin. Alright, so Tyler landing mission. Off we go. Okay, so I'm in interplanetary space and it's decided that my closest approach is actually this. So I'm gonna make a quick adjust. Oh wait, it's not quite decided anything just yet. Alright, we'll wait for this. I'll, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just hold off on that. Let's take care of launching the Dres mission. Oh, by the way, in the middle of all this, I should mention I have not forgotten about Erden Kerman. Uh, who is currently in orbit around Gilly? He needs to return. The thing is that Eve is in the complete opposite position from where it needs to be in respect to Kerbin. So even if we time warp through uh, this, the Jewel thing, and not not through the whole Jewel mission, of course, but uh, to launch the Jewel mission and then launch the Dres mission, Eve will go about here. Let's say it really has to be 54 degrees behind Kerbin. Oh wait, that's the transfer too, isn't it? Um, from... Oh, I got that wrong. From Eve to Kerbin. 36 degrees. So, right. Um, so, uh, right, 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 right. Okay, so Kerbin has to be 36 degrees ahead of Eve. That's right. Uh, Eve is 54 degrees behind Kerbin for Kerbin to Eve transfer. Eve is 36 degrees behind Kerbin for uh, Eve to Kerbin transfer. Okay, so anyway, but the point is we have a little bit of time to wait before we send him back. So Erdin Kerbin is not forgotten. We, we will take care of him, but just not right now. Alright, so here we go. I've decided to give our Drez Missioneer something generally similar to what we've already launched to Tylo, except obviously now a crude capsule with parachutes for return. Uh, this portion should have about th uh, over 3,000 meters per second of delta V, and its job is to land on Drez, take off from Drez, return to orbit, and then return back to Kerbin. So 3,000 should be more than enough for that. Uh, this stage will be the stage to get us into orbit around Drez and uh, it'll get some help from this stage and so you see here I'm I'm using the OFL that I've just designed I decided not to design a brand new launcher just for this especially since the OFL worked except for that skipper stage so what I've done since we we don't really need the Delta V for the Dres mission that we did for Tylo 
Um, I think it is sufficient to just dump the skipper stage and have the two mainsail boosters feeding directly in like so. I've extended them a little bit, given them an extra fuel tank here, move the sepatrons accordingly, and probably uh, the launcher will be just shy of orbit, and so we'll need to burn the nukes for to complete orbit. Uh, that's a little bit touchy, obviously, because they don't have that much thrust, but I'll try to make it work out. I, I think it's just a little bit shy. I mean, we're talking about it's got uh, maybe 200, 300 delta V shy. Uh, if I mean, it's possible that I'm underestimating, uh, overestimating how much I need because the thrust weight ratio of this is pretty high. So we'll get through the thicker part of the atmosphere very quickly, and we won't have as much trouble as we did with the previous mission. So um, hopefully it'll work out. If if all else fails, we'll be able to rescue our Kerbal because we've got the parachutes. We'll just separate this and uh, bring him back down. So that should be alright, except the parachute, it will have to burn some of this fuel off before actually using the parachutes because the parachutes can't bear the full weight of this. And I guess the first person to... Well, Ribden Kerman hasn't had any... Ex well, he's only got uh, minor experience. I think it'd be fair to get Ribden on this one. Alright, so uh, Ribden Kerman is our guy to send to Drez. Uh, yes, Jeb has to catch up but uh, and maintain his superiority, but uh, we will we, we'll, we'll let this go. Uh, we'll have Ribden do it, and then we'll have Jeb do something else. Alright, so this is the plan, and this should be okay to go. So let's take it out. Oh wait, uh, we need to time warp a little bit to get into the right phase angle with Drez. So let me do that. All right, here we go. SAS on. Mop belt is only the stuff in the in the pod, so I guess we'll take that. All right, throttle up. Ribbed in looks all right. We've got solar panels available. All right, and uh, even a communication device and some science on there. Here we go. Okay, definitely nice acceleration here. Probably a little bit overdoing it. So yeah, sorry about not using uh, reusable launchers this time, but I need to reassess my reusable launcher strategy here. And so I want to do that and see if maybe we can come up with something a little bit more reliable. Uh, the OBX is good and uh, I sort of took it for granted. But I want to get something a little bit more stalwart and something that I can count on to come back every time and run the numbers on. So I'll be working on that. Okay, booster set. Booster step is good. We're losing a little bit of speed here, but that's expected actually at this point, and we're picking up now. Okay, I want to keep it around 30. 30 seconds to apoapsis. Again, because fuel is tight, I'm trying to be cautious about this, trying not to use the nuclear stage for orbit. Okay, it looks like a pretty ideal situation here. Okay, so 120 kilometers apoapsis. Right now our periapsis is below, below space, below 70 kilometers, but we are on our way up and we still got fuel here so the launch system had enough fuel so my concerns were unfounded and we can proceed to apoapsis one other thing uh, I I designed the Derek shuttle system you know with the whole stack and the three boosters in 0.25 I think I could do a better job in 0 0.90 designing those boosters so so yeah that's a thought that I'm pondering. 
Not to mention do a better job of the design in the shuttle, which now we have the larger parts. Though, you know, they're a little bit too shuttle-y, if you know what I mean. I'd like to have something that isn't quite so obvious. It's possible the um, Tyler Lander could have been just launched uh, as this one without the skipper stages. Though I, I do like having that extra Delta V there. And of course, having the main sail start off our transfer to Jewel was very helpful. That allowed us to match our trajectory. Um, okay, uh, sort of losing and gaining electric charge here. Let's extend these solar panels at least. Oh, I need to get to orbit, come on. Let me run the engine to help turn here. There we go. Hold on. Now let's continue turning. Go to this view. How are we? Oh, we're in a good orbit. 100 by 116. Alright, now like I was saying, I need to get some solar panels out. Okay, I've got an 8,000 kilometer encounter here at the descending nodes. It's ridiculously touchy. And possibly, well, we've got some electric charge fluctuations. Hold on. Um, oh, we're in the dark anyway. We only have 50 units of electric charge, though. I forgot to add batteries to the pod. Well, anyway, uh, it's not quite as detrimental when you have a Kerbal on board, but still. This was bad planning on the electric charge front. Alright, I think we better get going. We don't have as much mainsail stage to work with this time. It's a shorter burn overall, but still. Did I say shorter? Well, longer, since we don't have the main sail stage. It's less delta V overall, was what I meant. Okay, anyway, we are proceeding. Alright, so this indicates 300 meters per second left and a remaining burn time of a minute and 40 seconds, but we seem to be getting close as we did in the previous mission. It seems like we are hitting the orbit a little bit earlier than intended and a bigger gap this time again because of the duration of the nuclear stage and another well, let me stop doing this hold on another point to note is that we seem to have a lot more fuel than I I expected I've overdone it I guess today is my day for for overestimating things and creating a lot of buffer and I've added quite a lot more than I really needed I think if you take a look at the remaining stage uh, we've got you know about half our Delta V left in this stage which will be enough to get us into orbit around Drez probably and so really the Poodle stage is almost completely unnecessary okay wait I think we have something do we it's tough because Drez is pretty difficult to hit. I think we're we're off by quite a lot. Okay, so it looks like we need to burn about 557 meters per second more to adjust our orbit, uh, mostly radially, in order to get the encounter. And radially is what ends up happening when you deviate from your intended trajectory. So it is a waste but well, I just got done saying how much extra Delta V we have, so not a problem. Uh, probably take a little bit of time to burn through this, but perhaps not too much. Okay, coming up on the end of this, and how are things turning out? Well, for Drez, any encounter is a good encounter. Okay, looks like uh, 11,000 kilometers will be the minimum. But there we have it. Uh, we have Ribden Kerman on his way to Drez, the, the only location we haven't done any mission on. So, yes. With that, 
that means that we have a Tylo mission to take care of, a Drez mission to take care of, but we also have to bring our Kerbal back from Gilly, and we also have Elliot Kerman, the long-awaited Elliot Kerman, who also has to return from Duna, from actually Ike. He landed on Ike and planted that flag. So we need to bring two Kerbals back. We have one Kerbal on his way out and a probe on its way out. So lots of things happening. Also need to develop uh, a lot of new hardware. We will discuss that in the next episode. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.